What's going on, guys? It's your boy Anthony alongside the best Big Three account in the universe, Big Three News, aka Will, back with another edition of The Fourth Man. We have a special guest on today, Mikey Domagala from NBA Buzz. And we're pretty excited. I appreciate you coming on here, Mikey. No, Will, Anthony, I appreciate you guys having me on. I've been following you guys for a while. You know, Big Three News is a great page. You know, I follow it for a reason because you guys put out great content. And then this podcast, when I came across it, you know, it's just even, even better. Appreciate Co- the kind words. You were honored. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, appreciate just the kind words. a better words. version of us. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's great to hear. <laughs> oh, every, everybody's got their own progress and everybody, you know, I started a lot earlier, earlier than you guys. So you guys are doing great things as well. Appreciate that. And yeah, we'll jump into that because we definitely want to hear the story of how NBA Buzz came to life and how you've been able to grow and amass to the to the million range here on Facebook even. So uh, first of all, if you want to find the show on Twitter or on Instagram, it's at Fourth Man Pod. And if you want to find our personal handles, it's at A underscore Siggy at Big Three News. And for those tuning in on Dash Radio on Thursday from the Nothing But Net channel, appreciate you guys tuning in. Talking a little bit more NBA today, but it's all going to come together and going to learn how the NBA and Big Three are kind of almost tied together at this point with the calendar years being completely different for the rest of our lives. So super excited for that. And to find NBA Buzz, it's uh, official NBA Buzz on Instagram and on Facebook. At official NBA Buzz on Instagram and Twitter. And on Facebook, it's just straight up NBA Buzz. Yeah. So continue to follow our guest on here and, you know, already a great following there. So great content coming out always every day. So first off, how did you really get started and what kind of what was kind of the point in time where you saw it kind of run and take off there yeah so i got it started in january of 2012 when i was just 12 years old i'm 21 now you know that was eight years ago already um you know i was just a i was just a big basketball fan at that time i'm a knicks fan i live in new york uh kobe was my favorite player at the time rest in peace and you know i just wanted to to start putting my opinions somewhere where people where i could be heard and now it's Facebook at the time, you know? So like right now, the big platforms, Instagram, and of course, TikTok, which you, you could find NBA Buzz on TikTok as well. I'm a big um, TikTok guy. I love to hear that. <laughs> I've, I've been a little lackluster this quarantine with it because nothing new is really coming out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, started in 2012. And to continue answering that question, I really saw it popping off a couple of years later. Um, just everyday posts, just continuous staying very consistent and kind of just making unique content. And you know, being quick as hell with content and people like that. So that's how I've been seeing the growth. The quicker you are, the more people will want to, you know, tune in. For yeah. sure. And there's a lot of accuracy behind that too. So you just become a super credible page for people to, you know, be able to come to your page and, and know what's going on in the NBA, even as things as small as like the ball changing. So super cool to see that. And what, what's kind of been like the key just in, in terms of like consistency and being so quick and accurate? Because, you know, everyone's pretty busy you know throughout their daily lives so just for you to be able to jump on everything what's kind of been the key to be be able to do all that yeah I mean I wouldn't you know I think it's in between a a sickness and an addiction (laughs) you know I I have other pages in mind that I watch and I see that I kind of you know I feel like Michael Jordan here after watching the last dance but (laughs) you're my main competition and I'm kind of I just want to beat them out on things and I've been having that mentality for years you know always having your laptop handy your phone and being able to make content as quick as you can, wherever you can, no matter what. And that's kind of what I, what I've been doing for a really long time now. Uh, When you sort of going on from this process of starting, you know, as young as you are, was there a point where you were like, wow, like I've made it. Like, was was there a milestone that you hit or an event where you're like, okay, wow, this is actually becoming like a legitimate thing. Yeah. You know, that's tough to answer because I feel like I'm, I'm never going to make it in anything because there's always progress no matter what level you're at so from the beginning it was all about growth and then then i hit like a million followers and that that was kind of like a almost like an i made it moment which mm-hmm. is pretty cool then you know growing on different platforms but my most recent i made it moment i would say you know it's not really it's like half an i made it moment it's more just like seeing myself progress and getting to like higher grounds continuously is my show, which I have my banner behind me, Inside Buzz with Mikey Domagala, it's called. You can find that on YouTube. You know, just having NBA guests on and really having, you know, it's almost like I'm credible now to have these professional athletes come on and talk to me about their experience. And I get to send all my quotes around to news outlets and they could all use them. So, you know, I want to be a journalist and 
all of that happening is making me feel more credible and like I made it. Like having Hall of Famer, and you know, we're talking big three here. You guys are all about the big three. Nancy Lieberman on. That was that was pretty incredible. You know, I'm, I was uh, I was still 20 at the time. You know, I just turned 21. Having a Hall of Famer on my show at 20 years old is it was uh it was a great experience. That's awesome. Yeah, I and mean, we're big fans of Nancy Lieberman here too, and she's an incredible human being. So that that's just awesome and good for you, obviously. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And so you were doing the NBA buzz thing for a while. You're still doing it, obviously. But then the big three came into light where it's almost like we got more people into the pool just in terms of uh, being able to like follow NBA players and uh, see other NBA players continue their career. When it, the big three was first coming up and – you know, the thought and process was was coming together from Ice Cube and Jeff Kwanowitz. What was your first thoughts on it? Oh, man, I was in love with it. I was so happy that they were doing it. The first player pool that they dropped, um, it was interesting. You know, all the legends that were in it. And to be honest, my first, I remember my first recollection of it was thinking that all the people that they – announced we're going to play. I didn't realize. I thought Dr. J was going to play. I thought Clyde Drexler yeah. was going to play. But, hey, l- luckily Iverson played and, you know, some big names like that. So, yeah, I loved the idea of it. And content-wise for NBA Buzz, people ate it up. So every time I'd post about it, it would explode because it was this new thing coming out, these legends stepping back on the court. And it's just, oh, my God, for the couple of years now, I mean, I watch it every game I watch. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just awesome. You know, it's a different outlet and it's different than the NBA. Just a different atmosphere and just different hype. Yeah. And, and it, like you said, you know, they try to make it, I feel like they're, you know, as the guys who co-founded, they, they really are trying to make it as entertaining as possible, almost like a show more so than just like a, a game or an event. So it's been really fun and it's fun to, you know, have that in the summer. Now, obviously our, our calendars have changed. Like I, I mentioned at the beginning, forever um we don't really know if the sports calendar is going to go back to normal or they're going to th- see some things shift getting into kind of the nba you know there were obviously some chatter and some buzz no pun intended just around <laughs> how some nba players were getting together kind of like avenger style and you know coming together and saying hey we want the, the season to come back this year we you know we want to finish things finish this thing on just in your thought and opinion what is your, I guess, what kind of idea or what would you think is best case scenario for the NBA coming back this year, if at all? Yeah, you know, I thought about this a lot and just coming to one conclusion is just tough, you know, because of all the logistics that go into it. I think first off, the main thing to say is you want to return so nobody gets sick and everybody, you know, there's no repercussions from returning. Um, I think for the NBA, you know, the MLB is going to return in early July. Um, I think the NBA should look into something like that as well. Adam Silver is going to make the announcement in two to four weeks, I saw. Maybe like, you know, 20, maybe 20 games left in the season and then straight into the playoffs and just go from there. And then, But then again, it's like, okay, if you shorten the rest of the season and some other things are shortened or something – you got to think of the draft, comp, uh, you know, uh, the lottery, the NBA draft as a whole. How are the records going to pan out? It's just – it's all just really a mess. And then further, if it goes into July, into August, and even if it touches into September, when is the next season going to start? Is it going to start in October like it usually does? But yeah, it can't. There can't no. just be like a 30-day off season before they got to play 82 more games. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, to answer that question, it's like – I more have questions about it than me making a conclusion about it because it's, it's just so hard to just uh, – it's just so hard to just think about. Yeah, I mean, I have, like, the same mentality as you. Like, obviously, you know, for selfish reasons, I want basketball back, like, tomorrow. You know, oh, I like, I, like, I like – like, what I've realized, like, especially in, like, my own, like, friend group – is that like without sports on, like I have nothing to contribute to the conversation. <laughs> like, like everyone's talking about like their jobs and this and that. And I'm just like, Oh, I, I, I have nothing to talk about. Um, <laughs> but like, I've heard like, like you've seen like Jared Dudley like tweet and he's talked about like the season going into October of this year, like as late, like, I don't even know what you do with that. Cause in and a then, normal off season. And then, yeah. starting on, and then starting on Christmas, I hear if it yeah. goes into October. Oh, gosh. Crazy. That's, that's insane. I mean, a Christmas, I would say this, a Christmas like opening day, like obviously that like, would be pretty crazy, 
But I have a feeling that that's not going to happen just because the NFL is already scheduling games for Christmas Day. Yeah, so I think you that's think the biggest that they thing. Wouldn't, yeah, you think they wouldn't schedule games for Christmas Day if they had any you know, confidence that that might be the NBA opening day. I don't know. I mean, that's it's all, it's like you said, it's all a mess. Yeah, it really is. And I think that's the biggest thing that, you know, we're kind of alluding to is that it's almost like the NBA, the NFL, and even, you know, parts of the MLB are all going to be synced up at the same time. If, if everything, you know, kind of goes according to that plan and we're trying, you know, Will and I were discussing it last week on, on our last episode, just about where the big three would kind of tie in all together because, they are trying to start the season a little bit later in the year in that October, November range. And, you know, we've talked about this is a complimentary league and it's going to be tough to fit the big three in games and have people watch them, you know, during the time when the NBA is going on, the NFL is going on, um, you know, potentially the MLB playoffs going on. Just exactly. If, if you were, and- you know, in that decision-making group with the big three co-owners and some of the higher authority there, what would be kind of your – ideal situation there just in terms of like when the big three should almost start yeah i think like you said you know you basically had my answer i was going to say that the big three cannot resume when all these other major sports leagues resume you know the 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 thing about the big three is a ton of people watch it because it's in the off season of the nba so people you know just lost their nba access in june because of the finals being over you know if this was a regular um you know year so okay Last game they watched was in June. Now, oh, wow, later that month or early July, they could watch Big Three basketball again. So I think for the Big Three, they got to start when the NBA isn't happening. And, you know, I know they were mentioning that uh, Big Brother type house for the Big Three and stuff like that. That would be awesome. That's that's something different that they could look into and maybe draw people away from, you know, other other leagues that they may be watching. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing right now is like, so the news has basically been like, leaked but like we've yet to get like an official word from the big three itself so like we've heard from like sources from like usa today and other things that like the league is probably getting pushed back um ice cube was on brian custer's podcast and they showed like a little like 15 second snippet and in that snippet ice cube does say that the league has been suspended uh but i'm until that podcast episode comes out we really don't know what the official plan is So I think, I think like you said, I think you hit the nail on the head, you know, it it cannot be during the NBA regular season because that's the whole, uh, you know, the attracting point of the big three. I would just hate to see then the big three be forced, which has been a weekend sport its entire life to be forced to be then go up against either NFL Sundays or college football Saturdays. Exactly. And I'm not sure if they'd even be able to survive because their ratings would really go down. Mm-hmm. You know, as good as the big three is, people are going to choose the NBA over the big three. You know, like if they could fit in both, of course they would. But I mean, if you got a Lakers versus, uh, you know, Milwaukee Bucks matchup, Le- LeBron versus Giannis, what are you going to watch? You know, yeah. it's, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, even with the, you know, the great players that have been added over to the big three over time. And even this year, we were starting to add some bigger names as well. It just would be like you said, tough just to fit everything in and have everybody be able to watch it. I mean, we discussed maybe playing throughout the week, but that's not always like an attracting time to be on air. So it it really is just like a tough situation, and we're just going to really have to see how it plays out. But as far as the quarantine tournament goes, like I think the biggest selling point was that that would be the only thing sports-related on. You know, it could almost make or break what the big three is doing depending on how it goes and how ratings go. But with even that being pushed back and – you know, that's kind of, their hands are kind of tied with that situation. It's really hard to see, you know, it's really hard to even imagine if a big three season will happen this year, which, you know, would be super unfortunate, but I almost feel like they'd be better off taking a gap year and just seeing how everything plays out as much as it pains me to say that. I listen, I kind of agree with that. And I wish that quarantine thing that they put together would have happened. It seemed like it was going to happen. You know, that was, that was, that was a great idea by Ice Cube and Jeff. And, you know, like tonight, me and my friends have a plan at 9 o'clock to go on Xbox and, and watch the UFC event tonight. Like last week's UFC event went, was great. You know, tons of uh, great feedback from the media and stuff because it's the only sports on right now. Yeah. So if that quarantine big three, you know, a couple of weeks could have went down, they would have saw huge numbers. Yeah, and I sort of – I brought this up uh, yesterday on my Instagram, and I think it's really becoming a key factor is I think the thing that really killed – this quarantine tournament starting on time was the fact that it's in LA, you know, LA has sort of become, you know, maybe besides New York, really like the strictest 
uh, place in in terms of quarantine in the country. Uh, and, you know, if they're they're expected to be have the stay at home order continue for three more months. You know, I don't even know. Forget about just filming this thing, but I don't know how you're building the facilities. So I think if you're the big three, you have to start looking elsewhere, you know, like either Florida or, you know, Georgia, wherever these places that have deemed sports an essential service, you know, you have to, you may have to start looking at locations there because I don't think it's happening in LA anytime soon. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I just saw the the three month order coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, listen, Jeff and ice cube, they got a big challenge in front of them. Like we were saying. So it's like, where are they going to play? How are they going to play? And when are they going to fit in? Like we're, like we were just saying. Yeah, it's uh definitely i probably wouldn't want to be a part of that decision making group it just seems like a tall task to attack and i'm sure you know those two guys will figure it out and you know be able to put everyone in the best case scenario make sure everyone's safe but yeah that quarantine tournament i really think it would help at least the big three season especially though if there's any type of gap year cancellation of this year we saw that happen in march madness tournament wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world to think that the big three could take that same route if necessary Let's move to a, a more lighter note, a more positive note, I should say, because there there is some positives just to take away from this. And I think the biggest thing has been just been able to, to chat with a lot of big three players and personnel. But you've also had the chance to do that. And you talked a little bit about Nancy Lieberman. You you were able to have her on on NBA Buzz there. I mean, what what was that conversation like just talking to a Hall of Famer and, you know, champion one after another, a pioneer, a trailblazer? What? was it like just to be able to chat with her and, and conversate with her? Yes. We had, we had like an hour long conversation and with it all cut up, it came down to 45 minutes. Um, even off air, she was asking me about my journalism career, you know, where I'm at in school and stuff like that. She, like you mentioned before, just, you know, a great person, great woman, great, great basketball personality. Yeah. We were talking, you know, it, it was the day of the Kobe Bryant Memorial. So she was giving me some insight on her relationship with Kobe she actually read me out her last texts the day before with Kobe. Oh she was gosh. supposed to be on the helicopter with Kobe, Gigi, and that team because she was going to train them. So we spoke a lot about Kobe, a lot about the big three, you know, all leagues she's played in, you know, uh, WNBA and women in basketball. It was just a great conversation and really just, you know, conversation of for people who listen to it, I want them to take something out of it that, you know, the WNBA matters and women's rights matter and all that stuff. And Nancy sure. is a great component of it. And, you know, you're mentioning my show inside buzz. I also had Josh Powell on from the big three, Ryan Hollins from the big three, you know, former NBA guests. And there may be one more that I'm, I'm uh, losing track of, but yeah, I've spoken <laughs> to a bunch of big three people and they're just, Hey, they're just, they're all about the big three and they're all about promoting it. So it's just, it's just all around just a great thing. The big three. What's been the when what's been the feedback just from from your audience, you know, with you having a larger scale audience? I mean, what what's most of the things you hear about the big three when you especially when you have guests on? Oh yeah, that you know, most guests tell me well no, I'll I'll talk about the guests I've had on and also how I get feedback from the NBA Buzz community. So the guests, I mean, I remember Josh Powell telling me how it's like a very laissez faire league where there's not like clamps on them for every move you know they could bring their family wherever they want on the court off the court you know they got they don't practice every single day it's not as strenuous as a schedule as the nba so that's most of the feedback i'm getting from excuse me the players that it's very you know you could basically do whatever you want as long as you're there on game day and you're making your media appearances and you know it's (laughs) not like the nba where there's uh you know the referees are calling everything and that's another thing they were telling me about from the NBA buzz standpoint, people are loving it too, you know, seeing these these former greats back on the floor and balling out again. Uh, some people complain about, uh, you know, the new age thing with some lesser known players coming in, but hey, there's nothing wrong with the player making his name known in the, in the big three. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, that's really been like a talking point for us too. Um, you know, I know the players were sort of, the players we've talked to are kind of, have been like 50-50, right? You would say, Anthony, on the new rule? Yeah, I'd agree. Um. But honestly, from a fan's perspective, you know, I love it. Like, you've got guys like Andre Emmett, who unfortunately uh, we lost this offseason. But David Hawkins, like Andre Owens, guys who you may not necessarily be familiar of, 
like especially David Hawkins, like I'd never even heard of the dude. And then he comes in in twenty nine in that excuse me in uh, twenty eighteen, and yeah, and he's uh, second in MVP voting. So I honestly think you know, I think a big portion of it that Anthony talk and I talk about is that the players are still the GMs, you know. So even if all these young twenty two year olds come in, I don't think that the players are just gonna you know go all this for this youth movement and uh, get rid of all their friends that they've played with in the NBA. Um, but I honestly think that, you know, the big three, really the future of this league is it's going to end up being a platform to either get back to the NBA or maybe get to the NBA. What do you, what do you think on that? Do you think that's a good strategy for them? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, we saw that with Joe Johnson first. Um, actually it was actually Xavier Silas first. who I, <laughs> I interviewed twice for a print article I wrote a couple of years ago. Uh, and then I've done some, some YouTube stuff with him. He's actually, I'm going to get him on the show soon. Xavier Silas. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, he got signed to the 10 day contract by the Celtics after having a good year in the big three. He was still relatively young. Then again, we saw Joe Johnson hop back into the NBA and then he's back at the big three. But yeah, I mean, why not? Because you got to be seen somewhere. Right. So rather than just be training in a high school gym with nobody really watching you, maybe just your stuff on Instagram, you could show it to the whole world in the big three. And I think that'll continue to happen. And that's really what I think the big three, you know, as a platform has really provided just another avenue, but not just another one, multiple avenues. I mean, we talked a little bit about David Hawkins coming over here. I mean, a lot of these guys couldn't even play in the big three, you know, in prior years before they changed the rules because they had no NBA experience. We recently talked to guys like Alex Scales. You know, we had uh, Teddy Gibson on IG Live the other day. A lot of those guys are, are guys that played overseas for a long time are great basketball players, but they just never had the opportunity to showcase themselves. And I think that's the coolest part. And, and now with the, the new rule here this year, whenever that may be, allowing 22-year-olds to come in, it's just another way for guys to be able to showcase themselves. Maybe they weren't on, on prominent game nights uh, in college or you know, just took a different route. Um, now those younger guys also have a chance to, to showcase themselves and potentially – get into the NBA, it's almost a better opportunity for the younger guys. So I think that's the thing that I take away most from the big three and why I feel like it's the most essential summer professional league out there is just because it's it's just another avenue. And I think, you know, in a day and age where guys are going from the NBA to overseas, guys are going – or I'm sorry, NBA to overseas, high school to overseas, uh, guys are coming – from high school to the G League, now you have an opportunity to continue to add ways to funnel guys to the NBA and, and really find the most, I should say, the best talent out there. Yeah, and, you know, to piggyback on that, these 22-year-olds or 22 to 30-year-olds, you know, who are still young enough to make the NBA, think of the relationships that they're developing because, you know, Julius Irving and Nancy Lieberman, those legends know everyone in the NBA. So say Nancy Lieberman's friends with some GM on, I don't know, like the GM of, I don't know, the Kings. What is it? Wadi Divox or something? <laughs> whoever, whoever it is. Or for any team, right? Yeah, yeah. And Nancy Lieberman is really impressed with this player, and she passes it along to Divox or another GM. Hey, you know, that's an avenue, right, to get to the NBA just from the big three. So I think, you know, it's a good thing. That's a good point. And I, I was going to say, too, I think Steven Jackson has become a really good connection. I, I'm sure he always has been, but – just with him and Matt Barnes, the All the Smoke the podcast, and how much respect they're gaining for just being the outlet for guys to come on and, and chop it up and be real. Um, I almost think he's a really good connection as well. So, yeah, you're right in that sense that guys are going to be able to connect and, you know, learn from these these vets in here. I mean, we're getting guys like Zebo to come into the league now. And I think only more prominent names are going to continue to come along, you know, just as their careers are kind of heading towards the end or – whatever the case may be. And so I, you're right. I think that's a great avenue and just a great learning point for these younger guys that do come in. And I'll ask this too, just to, to bounce off of Anthony, what you just said, we love asking this question uh, to everybody. We love especially asking the players, but sometimes they like to play politician with us, which I, I understand. Um, but I'll ask you as sort of somebody on the other side of that, who are some guys in the NBA that you could see, you know, maybe taking that step to the big three? See, uh, I'm laughing over here because I told my older brother, Danny, about that I was coming on this podcast. And I'm like, oh, Danny, going on a big three podcast, they're going to ask me who I want to see. <laughs> Definitely. Who I want to see in the league, right? Mm -hmm. Who I want to see in the big three. So me and my brother came to a conclusion. We would want to see, you know, a little bias here, New York fans. Carmelo Anthony, 
you know, oh, of course, of course, mm -hmm. his mid range post up game and just, you know, big body in the paint and the big three. Tim Duncan, because, you know, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen because he's coaching now in San Antonio. But I mean, he would easily dominate the big three. And Dwayne Wade, you know, D Wade just came out of the league and uh, he'd fit in nice. And then, you know, you can mention all of them, Dirk and Kevin Garnett. I hear you. But for somebody in the league right now, I'd, I'd have to pick Melo. It's so funny because I felt like it wasn't that long ago we were talking about Melo potentially being an option for the big three now. Oh, my God. We spent like a month yeah, talking we, about Melo. <laughs> we <laughs> speculated on that so hard. We were almost praying every day that he would come. But I think we all knew in his mind that he was he was never coming. He was going to try to make his way back to the league and whatever capacity that was. But, yeah, Wade would also be a good one. We almost thought – you know, we t had Robert Hyde on the show who's – friends yeah. with D Wade and you know he didn't rule it as an option when he asked him you know we don't... we've heard Wade a couple of times yeah like we've couple, heard like Wade. too many times that we've heard Wade like names circulating around so well, I, I would love to see that if you think about it like these players still itch to play basketball are you kidding me oh for sure and, and they, they don't want to just play at like uh an LA fitness and really dominate mm -hmm. but they don't want to play in the NBA and really be you know on like a an M an everyday type schedule like that right. the big three it's a perfect in between so you know i'm looking forward to the future of who would come, come in because i again i love the big three and it's just it's just sick seeing these older guys ball out mm -hmm. are there any players in the big three that might have not been the most prevalent throughout the league but have really made a name for themselves in the big three that you've been keen to or you enjoy watching yeah i mean you know a little bias here because i've interviewed xavier silas but I think Xavier Silas, you know, he spent a couple couple seasons in the NBA. You know, he didn't do too much, but he was really balling out in the G League. And, you know, he was, he's really not this crazy known guy, but he put up plenty of great games and he hit a, uh, a game winner in the big three. And that, of course, you know, blew him up enough to get him an NBA contract. So to answer that question, thinking off the top of my head without thinking of it too deeply, I'd go with Xavier Silas. And th there's a bunch of guys like that, you know, uh, Ah, uh, I'm I'm drawing a Put point. you on the spot, and yeah, <laughs> no worries. No, Xavier Silas, I think, is a good one. And I think, you know, his most, I guess, known game from this past season was the last game when he really took ball hogs over the top and gave them their first win, hitting two clutch four-pointers, which is something you can't say in any other league. So, mm -hmm. You know what? I got another one for you quick. Uh, Will, Will Bynum had a pretty good year last year. I mean, Will Bynum was known in the NBA. You know, he's a pretty much Chicago legend. But in the NBA, you know, not not a star, yeah. you know, a good bench piece. But in the big three, he had, a, he had a good year, just off the top of my head. No, yeah, he was one of the more exciting players in the league. Now, obviously, a lot of that is because of the move he put on against Mike Taylor in that game against uh, Bivouac and Ghostballers. But he, he really made waves in the league. And, I mean, he, had, he broke the scoring record for a game with 33 points. I think it was against Killer Threes and, and Chicago in his hometown. So... Yeah, he did a lot of big things this year, and you know, hopefully he's coming back with most Bates there and Josh Smith. Will's a big Bivouac fan, so if I'm a huge Bivouac guy, <laughs> Bivouac's my sleeper pick. I've been saying that for like two. Are they months. really a sleeper anymore? I mean, whenever yeah. the league starts, we'll find out the rosters. I've always said I'm like they're my sleeper set. If they do bad, I will just be like, yeah, they were my sleeper. Yeah. But then if they do good, I'm just gonna throw it in everybody's face. <laughs> and yeah, guys, I mean, most Bates joining the league. That's a that's yes. another nice addition. Just mm -hmm. think, you know, he gained some nice clout when he was on those Warriors team. He, <laughs> people kind of fell in love with him there, and he's he's like a stretch big man who fits right in. So that'll be interesting. He oh, brings he's gonna be so much energy next to Josh Smith. He's yeah, he brings so much him. energy. I think that's the best part about him. Just always so happy to play. It feels like. Well, let's discuss kind of just like this past year because I feel like, like we were talking about a little bit. I think it really made its jump and evolutionized as a league as a whole and really was a, a key component to why season four was going to be so big. But just, I mean, just looking at season one and then now here we are at season three going into season four, what do you feel like's been the biggest, uh, or I should say most noticeable change or um, just like move that they've made that you've been like, wow, this is like a really credible league and this is something that's entertaining and more people should be on board with. You know, it's, it's not necessarily – in the league, I mean, obviously the addition of the well-named players helps, but I think their social media presence, 
because especially this le- this past season, we saw a lot more highlights of the Big Three on social media and in the mainstream, big pages like Bleacher Report and House of Highlights covering it. And I think that was just natural progression from the first season every year, more people getting more familiar and picking up on it on social media. So I think that's helped tremendously. You know, we saw LeBron James sitting courtside at the Big Three championship. He was dapping up all the players and, you know, paying all the respects. And we saw a lot of other celebrities in the crowd. So I think just natural progression of new players coming in, new rules, and it's just different. And that's that's what's what's made it so good. It's not the NBA. And it's just different, and people enjoy it, and LeBron enjoys it enough, and that, that tells you something. Yeah, we have a feeling that he was potentially scouting Joe Johnson. That's another <laughs> speculation that we hit on a lot, I felt like, throughout the season. It's like, oh, yeah, LeBron was there to scout Joe Johnson. Um, <laughs> probably not the case, but it's, it's fun and, and nice to dream yeah. about there. I mean, listen, Joe Johnson looks like Michael Jordan in the big three, you know? <laughs> Joe Johnson, is just that, that dude can't miss. Crazy. I mean, I felt like every time – it was so weird, too, because – I felt like at the beginning of the year, like the first game, I guess I should say the first half of the year um, for Joe Johnson, like that first half of their game, I believe it was against Aliens. It, he wasn't really finding his rhythm, and I was like, oh, no. You know, is, is this is this how it's going to go? Like, have, um, you know, Joe Johnson being our big addition, is he is he not going to be as good as we thought he was? And, and that quickly changed in a half. So mm-hmm. um, that was really cool to see on, on his behalf. And just the waves he made and he, he kind of, you know, paved his own road as well. So that's super cool. Um, when you were talking to, I know we're kind of just like going here and there, but yeah, no problem. When you were talking to Nancy Lieberman there, did she kind of discuss just like, cause I feel like this is always kind of a topic of discussion, but did she kind of discuss, you know, what the big three has provided for her? Just, you know, kind of look at her more so as like a basketball, um, you know, just more as a basketball coach, more so than like looking at the gender. Like, did she discuss any of that? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, she, she really touched on and wanted to thank Ice Cube and Jeff for reaching out to her first, you know, she's a hall of famer and they wanted to bring her on because, you know, not only is she just a woman, she's a great coach. And she, she really spoke on the respect that all the guys give her, you know, she's just doesn't matter her gender or her age or, you know, her background she's their coach and she gets the respect from the guys and they all respect her. And uh, what else is she touching on? You know, she loves the family aspect of it and all that kind of stuff. And she really spoke about the respect throughout the league, how there's really no enemies with each other and everybody just loves to do it for the good of the league. And it's like, you know, they're the foundation of it and they're just, they're just bringing it up. Yeah, only professional league where we have two uh, women coaches, but also the only – and a men's league, I should say, but also the only league where we have two women coaches that are, are both championship winners and, and coaches of the year, so uh, back-to-back. So that was super cool as well. And it was a great season three. And, and, you know, talk a little bit about transitioning to season four, just about some of the changes they were making and how we thought this is going to be their best year yet. But I think the interesting piece that they added to the puzzle there was just – New rules, obviously the bring the fire rule was a big one. What were your kind of your thoughts, I guess I should say more specifically on the bring the fire rule one-on-one and what kind of element that could bring to the table? I know it's kind of unsure on how it's really going to work, but just like initial thoughts about that. Not going to lie, I haven't thought about the big three in a while. Can you update (laughs) me on the flamethrower? I know it's like you could challenge somebody one-on-one or that's, something like that's that. That's exactly right? what it is. Yeah, so it's basically this. So basically, if if I'm going to the rack and I and you foul me, right, and you're like, there's no way in hell I just fouled that guy, your coach can then tell the ref, like, we're going to challenge that, or like, and technically they're calling it bring the file. So we're going to bring the fire on that, and then, you, and then you play me one-on-one for it, and then if you score, then it's not a foul. That's what, that's what I thought. I just didn't yeah. want to sound like I – No, no, I you're good, you're good. I don't want to talk in the wrong thing. (laughs) What are you talking about? But yeah, I mean, listen, that's just another example of the big three differentiating themselves from everywhere else. Where else are you going to see that? Right. Where are you going to see the bring the fire? Where are you going to see the four pointer? You know, and people like that. And, uh, you know, Hey, that's street ball, you know, talking the trash and challenging each other and, you know, ball don't lie. So bring the fire. I like it. I like it. Yeah, well, hopefully we get a chance to see it. We thought we were going to see it tested out in that quarantine tournament. And, you know, a lot of players we've asked about it, 
a lot of them are kind of like, well, we don't really know how it's going to go. So we think it's a good idea, but if it's one of those things where they're calling fouls inside a disputed foul call, things get dicey. So Exactly. Like how often are they going to really <laughs> stop it? All right, right, bring the fire, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll be a work in progress it would have definitely have been interesting to see you know it, it definitely was just a cool rule that i was more excited just to see how it was going to play out than anything else but you know hopefully hopefully we'll eventually get to see that somewhere down the line yeah and i think the other rule that they changed that is, is slight but it, it was kind of more exciting for me and we touched on a little bit was just lowering the age to 22 and allowing young guys to come in just in your opinion, I mean, from if you were a 22-year-old kid and you had the option to continue in the G League or go the big three route, what would be your decision? i try to do both if there's any way oh, like possible. You know? Yeah. Because you're going to be staying in shape if you play in the G League, and obviously you're going to be on that schedule. So if you're on a G League team, I don't know, who's, on, who's in LA – one of the Los Angeles teams or California teams, right? And a bunch of the games are on the West Coast. Or, you know, we see the G League and the NBA contracts, the two-way contracts where, you know, Taco Fall with his contract could play half his games in the G League, half his games in the NBA. You know, they shuffle him around. So why can't a 22-year-old play in the G League end in the big three or something like that? You know, this is just speculation, obviously, just thinking of, you know, best-case scenario. But, I mean, I think the choice between the G League and the big three, eh, it's tough. You know, that's up in the air. But I think definitely big three over overseas, just from the, you know, the publicity standpoint of who's going to be watching and who's going to be seeing you. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, right, like they had Kevin Durant rumored to, you know, not if everything's going according to plan, not play this season, but play in the Olympics. So if you're a kid in the G League, or even if like you're like an Xavier Silas, kind of like a vet, like floating around the G League, what's the difference between playing a full NBA season and then going to play in the Olympics? You know, it's probably less strain on your body if you play a full G League season and then just go play once a week in the big three. Mm -hmm. And you're going up against established NBA talent. And like you said, which I think is a huge component of it, you're getting these connections. Yep. So I agree. I think a combination, especially for some of these young guys, and especially for those like vets, like you said, I think it, it, it could it, – it's huge. Listen, in all honesty, we see it. Anything could really happen in any professional sport if a commissioner wants it to. Right. Like Adam Silver is big into the publicity standpoint of a lot of things, like, uh, like the G League implementing the high school – to the G League straight up rule now. I mean, that, draw, that just drew a lot of attention these last couple of weeks. So why wouldn't a G League player playing part-time in the big three draw attention? You know, that just might draw even more viewers to the big three. So, I, you know, everything's about money and anything's possible. It's just, you know, who, who wants it to, who wants to let it go? That's a good point, though. I mean, with the big three continuously trying to find ways to put themselves on the map and just grow the community as a whole, you know, having a guy come from the G league or play in both the G league and the big three could really just continue to add fuel to the fire there and just continue to build and grow the big three. So that's a good point. I like that. And I think a lot of guys could take advantage of that. I've never even thought about that until now, to be honest. Hey, I love I'm, it. I'm liking it too. <laughs> the candidates, uh, candidacy, candidacy, uh, mm -hmm. it's perfect it, for it. It, it makes sense because why shouldn't these players who, all right, yeah, you're paying them a, a G League contract, but, you know, it's not as strenuous as the NBA, and they'll just draw more attention to themselves. So, Right. No. I mean, because you think about it, and I think you hit the nail on the head too. Like, last summer was really – it was like, in terms of the basketball world, like, it was the summer of Joe Johnson. And that was solely because of everything that he was doing in the big three. Like, besides, like, the NBA free agency, which is a huge thing. But Joe Johnson was, I feel like, in the headlines, like – almost like every week trending topic that every was, week yeah and like they were talking about it on like espn and everything like oh like is joe, where's joe johnson gonna sign like is joe johnson back should he have never left the nba and stuff like this so if you're a kid right if you know i just think of someone like you know like a jalen green or somebody like that or you know a kid that's trying to get their name out there let's say you go you play in the g league and then you ball out but then a highlight surfaces of you crossing up like Will Bynum or crossing up, you know, like Rashard Lewis or something like that. Uh, that can't hurt your draft stock. 
exactly. is only going to help your your you know popularity and your image and everything like that. Well, and we saw like no, R.J. Hampton, you know, going to Australia. We saw obviously Lamelo Ball has a little bit more prominent name there, just with everything and his ties with his brother and dad. But you know, we saw R.J. Hampton, you know, really be the first one to make that move at least in his class, and that made waves. Oh yeah. So, uh, certainly an interesting point, maybe one that the big three could consider down the road when it makes more sense. And obviously, first when we get it out from this quarantine that we're we're going through and find some safety solutions uh, just to keep everyone healthy and safe but yeah uh, we'll see how it all plays out here and hopefully we get some sports back here soon just you know um, you know coming over from NBA buzz being able to grow that uh, and what you've been able to do just to provide content for other people and be a credible source if you had any advice for people that were wanting to follow in your footsteps or what would be your advice be just to be able to be able to accomplish what you have yeah, I get asked this question a lot on a diff- bunch of different podcasts, and I I always try to be as real as possible because, like, the NBA page market and sport page market is very saturated. You know, like, off, you know, off air, so to speak, we were having the conversation of why you guys started this. It's because there were no other big three pages or podcasts around. And, you know, you guys are growing pretty well and growing, pro- you know, nicely. I think my advice to kids is find something that's not exactly covered so often or is very unique that people really want to follow. Like the only reason why NBA buzz blew up so much is because of the timing. So if you're going to start a page now, you're way behind all these pages that started eight years ago, like in my case, you know? So I think finding something unique and making unique content for it and really taking a unique angle, whether it's sports, you know, interview players from that league or something like that. So that would be my advice and just to stay very consistent and just, you know, every single day, just put your all into it and you'll grow. That's probably the hardest part is being consistent, you know, continuously doing stuff, whether it be every day, every week. I think that's ultimately what makes or breaks people. And for you, you know, eight years strong, you've continuously grown in teen results. So kudos to you and really appreciate you coming on. What do you have in store? I mean, right now with everything going on, I'm sure it's hard to continuously post and, keep people up to date and just have content out there. So what's kind of your uh, calendar looking like, or, you know, your schedule looking like with NBA buzz and inside buzz there? Yeah. You know, inside buzz, uh, to start on that, I got Keon dueling coming on the show next week. So okay. uh, that'll be a cool one. Yeah. 10 year NBA vet. I got a guy who used to make N one mixtapes, Louis strikes. He's also an actor coming on soon. Uh, who else have I been in contact with? Uh, I'm trying to get some more big three guys as well. I gotta, I gotta reach out to my guy Oliver Maroney. He, uh, he hooks me up sometimes. Oliver's the Fuller. best. Yeah. Oh yeah, he is the best. Have you guys had him on yet? Yes, yes. We're, uh, we're, we're big fans of Oliver, and Oliver's really helped us out too. So he, perfect. Because yeah. I was gonna say, if if he hasn't been on, I'll get him on for you guys. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, he definitely provides the best information. Obviously, being the oh, yeah. the big oh, three woes there. So exactly, he, he's the bomb. So, yeah, so that's for Inside Buzz. For NBA Buzz, you know, it's getting a lot of throwback content. Like on this day in NBA history, this happened. You know, some quotes from Instagram Lives that a bunch of players are having. And just, you know, putting out anything that comes through about the new season. Uh, about the new season. About about resuming the 2019. <laughs> Feels like a new season. Oh, uh, exactly. You know, so everything's just a, a work in progress. I just, I need the NBA back, man. I, I miss oh, it. I hear you. Agreed. I will say, I, I give you a lot of credit because – my friends were like sending me like stuff from like other, like, you know, like similar like sports pages and stuff. And like some of the content that they're putting out, like some pages have like resulted to like not even putting out like sports content anymore. Like it's just like pictures of like puppies, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like highlight accounts and I'm like, what is this? But you have really like stayed true to like what you are, which is like an NBA news and like NBA like content account. So like really like props to you for doing that. Cause especially now, believe me like i know like I mean, how hard it is yeah even espn yeah. just posts you know some dumb shit on there yeah that, i mean they're just running out of <laughs> ideas so yeah, yeah hats I mean, off to you listen guys uh i gotta tell you these uh you know house of highlights isn't house of highlights anymore it's like no. it's like house of fails and house of <laughs> house of who could do the best quarantine. Yeah. what is it america's uh, funniest home videos i mean i feel like it's just that exactly and listen a bunch of people you know uh, a bunch of people complain about it because you're 
you have this audience posting sports content and then you post nonsense yeah. sometimes. So it's all about staying true to your audience and it's kind of some stuff that I've learned over, over my time in social media, just give the people what they want. Absolutely. And that's why everybody who's listening to this should definitely be following NBA buzz, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, I'm assuming they can find inside buzz on your YouTube page. Yes, they can. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So everyone should be following that. Always going to stay true to himself. Always going to have the best NBA content out there and that he can provide. So yeah, Mikey, we just really appreciate you coming on and just chopping it up with us, talking a little basketball. We all miss it. And you know, hopefully when the time is right and hopefully that's soon, we'll, we'll get that back and go back to our, our normal lives, just talking sports all the time. Yeah, no, guys, thanks for having me on. And Will and Anthony, it's nice to finally see who's behind these accounts I follow. It's funny, you know, doing some of these interviews, I finally get to meet the people, not just the page, you know? <laughs> so, for sure. Yeah, it's nice meeting you guys. You guys do a great job as well. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank Same you. to you, my guy. But again, appreciate you coming on. Um, look forward to future conversations when we can actually talk basketball. Yeah, for sure. You know, if you guys need anything, let me know for your page. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate that. I'll be sure to promote this on NBA Buzz on all platforms. And yeah, we'll take it from there. Thank you, sir.